Welcome to the Diabetes Tour Guide. I am your host, Andy. I have worked as a physician assistant in the integrative health space for over four years, and I have lived with type 1 diabetes for over 19 long, grueling years. <laughs> I'm kidding. They haven't been that long, but 19 years. So I know that diabetes, just like medicine, is not one size fits all. So join me on our tour as we uncover, discover, and master the nuances of diabetes. So today we are continuing our stop discussing insulin. This is that main molecule behind diabetes. Remember, insulin is like those floating beautiful keys that are flying in the Chamber of Secrets in Harry Potter that try to find the lock to unlock and make something happen. This is what a hormone does. We discuss what insulin is and what happens when there's not enough insulin. So what about what happens when there's too much insulin? There's a couple key differentiating things we need to discuss because this episode's called insulin resistance, but there's a couple things that can happen outside of insulin resistance when there's too much insulin. The first being is that too much insulin in the setting of type 1 diabetes. Remember previous episode when there's insulin deficiency with type 1 diabetes, that means there's no insulin. So these patients are giving insulin to themselves to, to fix that problem as a treatment. So with too much insulin in this circumstance, the patient has given too much insulin as a treatment, and it creates a, a state of hyperinsulinemia, hyper, too much insulin, insulin, anemia in the blood. So this creates a state in the body that's called hypoglycemia. Hypo, meaning low, glycemia. This is sugar or glucose in the blood. So this will be discussed on a different stop along the tour, what hypoglycemia and hyperglycemia look like. That's too little and too much glucose. But that is one setting where there is too much insulin. So type 1 diabetes, over-treatment with insulin can create too much insulin in the body, which then means that insulin outweighs glucose and you have too little glucose. But there's also additional circumstances in uh, people without diabetes where they, where they may experience a hypoglycemic state without necessarily a diabetes diagnosis. Say, for example, you go outside, it's hot outside, you haven't eaten all day, you start working in the yard, then you go run five miles, uh, and then you get stressed and forget to eat and keep working without supplementing your body with carbohydrates or glucose anyone can get hypoglycemia or low blood sugar. So that's another circumstance, not in insulin resistance, where there's too much insulin. So remember, if there's too many keys floating around and not enough locks to unlock, then, then too, insulin outweighs glucose. And those are like the seesaw. If you have too much insulin, too little glucose, or too much glucose, too little insulin. That's homeostasis. But today, I want our main focus along this stop to be a condition known as insulin resistance. This is where the body makes too much insulin that does not work very well. So remember in that Harry Potter, I keep referring to Harry Potter, but I love, I love Harry. We got, who doesn't love Harry? So he's in the Chamber of Secrets and he's flying around and all those keys are bent and they've hit the wall. He's grabbed all these keys to try to find that one that unlocks to go to the next level in the chamber. All those keys can become resistant or malfunction. They just don't work that well. Remember, the main target of insulin is glucose. It's to get glucose from out of the blood, out of the artery, into the cell. So what happens when insulin doesn't do its job? This is insulin resistance. Let's refer to the diagram of the day. So two, you'll notice that this is a pretty busy diagram behind me. This is understanding insulin resistance. But what I want you to notice are these bottom two panels where we have a normal or optimal insulin level versus an insulin resistance level. You'll notice that the receptor site for this is malfunctioned and insulin, when it tries to unlock it, the key doesn't exactly fit. So it can't unlock the lock and glucose doesn't get where it needs to go. 
So not only does glucose accumulate, or there's too much glucose sitting in the blood, but there's also too much insulin in the blood too. Because your body, to maintain homeostasis, will think, I'm going to make more insulin. That's the problem. If it can't unlock the lock, I'm going to make more keys to try to fit that lock. So your body is piling in more insulin. That doesn't work. So no sites are hit. No receptors are unlocked. No keys still fit that lock, but your body keeps sending out more. And what happens? Insulin accumulates and glucose accumulates. That's what you'll see in this diagram in the very bottom corner that both get in the blood. So this is not only a hyperglycemic state, which is hyper, too much, glycemia, glucose in the blood, as well as a hyper insulinemia. That's a tough one to say. You can say it three times fast. Hyperinsulinemia. Too much insulin in the blood. So you have too much insulin and too much glucose. This is key to insulin resistance. So I often compare it this way. Imagine a middle school basketball team. This middle school basketball team is not good at basketball. They're just, they're just not good. They are a mediocre middle school basketball team. And this coach, let's say this coach is not actually a basketball coach. He's a seventh grade science teacher who gets voluntold to coach basketball for this middle school basketball team. He thinks, I'm just going to send out more middle schoolers to play this game. I have five out there that aren't really doing what they need to do. I'm going to send more. So he sends five more. They still don't know what to do. So he thinks, I'm going to send 20 more. 30 more, 50 more, 100 more. So now hundreds, thousands of middle school basketball players who are not good at basketball are sitting on the floor doing nothing. And what happens? The ball doesn't move. They don't score any points. The ball doesn't go through the net. That is insulin resistance. And that's what happens in a body that thinks that that's what it needs to do to fix the problem. More insulin will get the job done. Really what needs to happen is you replace your coach to send out better, more efficient players, NBA players to get this job done. But treatment for it, we're gonna discuss on future stops along the tour. For now, I want you to think insulin resistance is like a not very good middle school basketball team. More players who don't know how to score the point. So what happens with that? Remember the targets for insulin. So insulin works, remember, on glucose to get into these cells, but there's a couple other mechanisms too. It stores fat. So as it stores fat, you can store more fat if you have more insulin doing that job. Also too, it creates protein. You can create more protein with the with more insulin or a hyperinsulinemia state. So it's almost like you get kind of the negative side effects with too much insulin in this resistant state. But we'll talk about side effects. We'll talk about symptoms. We'll talk about disease conditions that deal with insulin resistance. But that's the main thing I want you to remember today is that Too much insulin means that glucose doesn't get where it needs to go, and insulin has opportunity to do the things you don't want it to do. But there is hope. There are treatments. There are ways to do things naturally and through prescriptions to help out with an insulin-resistant state. But that concept is all I want us to, uh, to know for today. So it's a heavy one. That's a big one today with insulin resistance and what we're learning. But There are a lot of stops along this tour, but if you stick with me, your tour guide, we will get through this journey together. So until the next stop, take care.